Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. I'm not a big fan of the rain, and I really wish it was sunny out. <laughs> so I just took a shower. You can see my hair is like still wet. Just threw some mousse in it. Threw my robe back on because I am not going anywhere today. It is yucky outside. And I have lots of masks that I still need to make. Um, and yeah, so today is a great day for painting. So as you can guess by this little guy right here, we're going to paint a sloth today. Isn't he so cute? He's adorable. So we're going to paint a cute little sloth. You can kind of see what he looks like right there okay so we're gonna wait about maybe another minute for some more people to hop on um meanwhile i'm gonna go over some of the stuff that you need okay so oh somebody's messaging me hold on i'm just gonna get that out of my that little bubble out of the way hi faith i miss you guys so much it's not fair darn it so anyway couple of things that you're going to need. You either need a canvas or a piece of paper. So you want your canvas to be at least an 8 by 10 if possible. That's about the size of a piece of paper. So either one works, okay? Um, I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. If you do not have acrylic paint and uh, you're using paper, you can use crayons, colored pencils, even markers will work, okay? The good thing is I learned is you can actually use acrylic paint on paper. Like, you know, the kind you put in your printer to make copies? You can uh, paint on that and it works great. We did it the other day for the zombies paint night. So that's good too. Hey, Gwen, how are you? I think one of you is the one that asked me for this sloth paint night, I believe, right? <laughs> I try to do the best I can to make everybody happy. Hi, Jalen. Hi, sweetheart. So, um, again, yeah, that's what you're going to need. Either 8x10 canvas or piece of paper. Um, you need some paint. We really don't need that many colors for this painting. The um, You're going to need white, some white, some brown, and some green. And that is pretty much it. Um, you're going to need a pencil with a really good eraser. Sometimes the erasers on the back of pencils don't work that great. And they end up just making a bigger mess. So if you have a separate eraser that works better, try to grab one of those instead, okay? Um, and then you're going to need a permanent marker. So a black permanent marker. Make sure it's not washable because if it's washable, it will smudge. So make sure it's permanent. It doesn't have to be Sharpie. I don't use Sharpies. They're too expensive. Um, this is like an Amazon brand, but just make sure it's permanent. That's all that matters. The brand doesn't matter. Okay. And then you're going to need paper plate. If you're using paint, you're going to need a paper towel to dry your brush or napkin, um, a bin or a cup with some water in it and a small brush. Okay. So those are the things that we're going to need. And I will go over some of that stuff again. If I go a little quick for you, I apologize. I try to make these videos no longer than an hour and 15 minutes. I don't want them to be super long. So um, if I'm moving a little too quickly, what you might want to do is you can watch the rest if you want um, and then wait till I'm done because as soon as I finish um, doing the live, um, all the videos automatically get saved into the photo section of this group. There's about 30 videos in there right now. Um, that you can go back to and paint anytime you want. They're all saved in there. So as soon as this one's done, it's going to automatically get saved in there. So you can like pause it, rewind it, do what you need to do, and you could take your time. So if I move too quickly for you, you might just want to wait and go back and watch it at your own pace. It's up to you though, okay? Or you could just sit here and watch. That's fine too, you know, and see if you like it. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put this little guy down for a second. I'm going to sit at him. Maybe I'll put him behind me. I don't know if he's going to stay, but... Try to stay right there. All right. See if he stays there. <laughs> so what we're going to need to start, you're going to need your pencil and your eraser and your canvas or your paper. I'm going to use a marker. I'm the only one that's using marker right now. Nobody else. You guys are using pencils. I'm using marker. Okay. So here we go. I already drew it out. You can draw yours different if you want. I'm trying to do it as simple as possible for you guys. But if you want to change anything, go right ahead and you can change stuff, okay? 
Um, see how you can't really see that great in pencil? So the way it works is I draw everything or I trace it step by step in marker so you can see it and you only draw what I trace in marker, okay? So the first thing we're going to work on is going to be the branch. So I'm going to trace it and then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to explain what I did and then you're going to do it, okay? So some things I can trace with it facing forward, but most of it I can't. So I'm just going to do this. Turn it around, show you, and then you're going to do the same thing, okay? So first thing we're going to do is the big branch that our sloth is hanging on. First of all, you want to make sure that your canvas or paper is this way. It needs to be this way and not this way. So you do not want it this way. You want to make sure that it is this way, okay? That's the number one. Make sure you're holding your canvas or paper the right way, okay? So once you do that, we're going to draw that big branch. So really close to the top, you're going to make two slightly curvy lines about that far apart, okay? Yeah, I'm using a filter. I don't know if you guys can see the filter, but I hope so. Because I didn't feel like putting any makeup on. I just got out of the shower. So as you can see, they're not that far apart, but you don't want your branch to be too skinny because it's holding a really big sloth. So don't put your lines too close together. And then leave just enough room to add a little branch there later on. So only do what I do in marker. It goes all the way across from one side to the other. And it's slightly curved. If you make it straight, that's fine. That works too. But um, it, it is slightly curved. They're not perfectly straight lines on purpose. Okay. So that's that. That part's a little easy, right? Okay. So the next thing we're going to work on is going to be the head. So wait for me, okay? And you might have to adjust this. Okay. So just listen first before you start drawing, okay? So this is the head. As you can see where it is, it's a little bit lower than the branch. You don't want to put it too close, but you don't want to put it too low either, okay? Because remember, it's hanging, okay? So we don't want to put the head too close from the branch or too far down, okay? Because then it won't look right because then the arms will have to be super long. And they, don't, they have long arms, but we don't want to make them too long. So you're going to start off by doing an, like an oval. So it looks kind of like an egg shape, right? See the part that I have in black? Kind of looks like an egg shape, something similar. So do that off to one side. If I hold it far out, you can kind of see how much space you have. So again, only do what I'm doing in marker. So a big oval right there for the head. And it should be about that far down from your branch. You might have less room on the bottom. This is a 9 by 12, by the way. I probably should have told you that. So this is a teeny bit bigger than an 8 by 10, which is the size of a piece of paper. So if I hold, this is, there's a piece missing, look. This is a typical piece of paper. So yours is kind of like here. So I only have like a tiny bit, it's only a tiny bit bigger than yours. So it's not going to make much difference. So I made an oval. Okay, once you have the head in place, which you can go back and adjust, that's not a big deal. This is why you're doing it in pencil. You're going to find the middle of that. And you're going to make another oval for the nose. And you're going to color it in with your pencil. So you're going to do like another oval shape right in the middle of the face like that for the nose. Only do what I do in marker. Okay, so that part's pretty easy. The next part that we're going to do is um, the sloth's face is a is different colors. It's not all one color, okay? So we have to do another section. And I think, hold on, I need to go over this. All right. So, inside of the original, this is inside, okay? 
Make sure you're leaving, before you do this next part, make sure you leave enough room to add the face. So don't make this part too small, okay? Keep it kind of close to the edges. So the, the head, the top of the head is here. This is not the top of the head. This is the cheek. This is the cheek. This is the cheek. This is the mouth. This is the top of the head. So you want to make sure that you add these little hairs. So it's like three little triangle shapes right here. So you're going to add like three little hairs right here because this is the top of the head. And then just make another oval inside the big oval for the rest, okay? So again, make sure you're leaving. When you do this next part, you leave enough room for the rest of the face because you don't want to squish the face in there. So before you do this next part, you have to make sure you have that in place. Then we're going to make two little dots for the eyes. Make two dots for the eyes, just like that. Just two dots. Okay, so that part's easy, right? And then the next part we're going to do is the mouth. It's kind of like you're just giving him a smile. You're going to do the mouth and then you're going to do like a little curve underneath, okay? So you're going to give him a mouth and then just do like a little curve underneath. Okay, so so far pretty easy, right? Now the most important part is if you look at him, see how he's got like the dark area around his eyes, like it's like a mask, kind of like a raccoon has like the mask. Um, you're going to do that. And I'm going to trace it so you can see. Okay, so you're going to draw that little mask around the eyes just like that. I think today's a good day to make meatloaf. I think it's a good meatloaf day. I don't know. I don't know what to make anymore. Okay, so after you do the mask, we're done with the face. So we're going to start working on the rest of the body, okay? So the first thing we're going to work on is this first arm, okay? So again, let me just draw it and I'll turn it around. So the first arm goes from right about here on his head. So it doesn't start down here, it kind of starts right there where my finger is and go up to the branch. Yeah, I know. Like, the kids had ramen for lunch. They're like, want to eat ramen? Go ahead. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I gave up. I'm like, lunch? You're on your own for lunch. Dinner? I will cook and I'll help you out with dinner. But lunch and breakfast? You're on your own for that. <laughs> By the time we wake up anyway, it's like time for lunch anyway. So we kind of just like skip breakfast almost. You might as well just eat lunch at that point. And then they just stay up late and... Forget the schedule now. Well, my, our kids are pretty much teenagers. The youngest one is 11. So they're 11, um, 11, almost 14. He'll be 14 in June. Um, Lindsay is 15. And then Brendan just turned 16 a couple days ago. So they're teenagers. That's what they do, sleep a lot. Okay, so we got the beginning of the first arm, OK? 
Okay, we're not going to do the rest of this, the arm yet. So just that part of the arm. Don't do the rest of this arm. We're going to do that later, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to do the rest, like the back, his back. Again, let me trace it, and then I'll explain. All right, so just listen quick. So we're going to do his back. So right about here where my finger is, okay? You're going to make it a little bit round, not too round. We don't want him to have like a hump back or anything. Hi, Olivia. So again, but we don't want it to be straight. We're not giving him a straight back, but we also don't want it to be too curvy because he'll look like a camel, you know. So make it a little curvy. So you're going to start right about here, okay? And he's got a pretty long body. So you can see how much room I have left, okay? So I went from here. And I kept going, I kept going, and then when I thought that the body was long enough, I started to curve up and then stop at the branch. So right here, okay? So let me back up a little bit so you can kind of see how long you need to make the body. So the body starts right here on this part of the head, on the bottom right here, and then slight curve, keep going, keep going, and then this is like where his bum is. So you want to round that out and then go up and then stop when you get to the bottom of the branch, okay? So I'll hold that up for a little while. because This part's very important, so I wanna make sure that you guys get this part correct, because if this part isn't right, we can't get the rest right either, okay? Then there'll be lots of erasing to do. Ugh. I just took a shower, so my hair's like all like crazy. I usually straighten it, but I didn't have time to do that, so. Oh well, I'll do it later. Not going anywhere anyway. So, that's the body right there, okay? Now that we've got the body in place, we're gonna work on one of the back legs, okay? So I'll do it and then I'll explain it just how we've been doing everything else. Okay. He's going to look like he's got an amputated foot or toes for a second. In the picture, I don't really like how they did that part. It looked like he had like toes missing or whatever. So I'm going to add toes, but you decide how you want to do that. So for now, what we did was we ended right here, right? So this is where we stopped. And then we're going to extend this back leg right here onto the top of the branch, okay? So we stopped here, now we're gonna go around like this, and we're gonna do his back leg. His back legs are a lot bigger than his front, his, his legs are bigger than his arms, right? Just like our legs, if you look at your legs, your thighs, they're a lot bigger than your arms. Your arms are thinner, right? So keep that in mind when you're drawing your sloth as well. His legs are a lot bigger than his arms, okay? So we want his leg to be a pretty good size, okay? So we're gonna go like this, and you're going to stop right there. Okay. Now, we're going to move on to an arm. This is a leg, but it's a back leg, so you can't really see it. We'll do that one later. So now we're going to do his arm. Remember, this is the same shape as this, but this needs to be smaller or thinner, okay? Remember, legs are thicker or bigger than arms. So even though we're gonna make this arm right here the same shape, it needs to be a little bit smaller, okay? So let me trace and then you'll see what that is. Okay. So what we're doing is we drew the arm we drew the line for this arm, right? We're gonna ignore that, okay? Pretend that's not even there. So we're just gonna draw an arm that looks like this, leaving a little space. Okay, there should be like a little space in between. Okay. Now we're drawing the the other arm, the front arm right here, making it smaller than the leg, but the same same basic shape as this, but smaller. Okay. And it should be touching the top of the branch.
on the right. So I'll give you guys a minute for that. We got the back leg, we got a front arm, we got part of this arm, but we're not finishing that one yet. Now we're going to do its belly. Okay. So we're going to give our sloth a belly, so right around here. You figure out where you think your sloth's belly should be. Give your sloth a belly. You're just going to connect from here to here. Make sure you're not connecting from here to here. These lines should be coming down past the belly. So don't do this. Don't connect from here to here. You want to go higher. Okay? These lines should do not get connected. Do not connect these. It needs to be higher, like from here to there. All right, good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have you guys erase a couple of things. I can't do it because I traced everything in marker, but you see this line from the branch that's going through your leg right here? You need to erase this. Erase this the best you can to so erase this line. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the arm. The line from the branch that's going through your arm, you need to erase this right here. Erase that and erase that for me. Again, I can't do it because I'm tracing things in marker so you can see the steps. But you're doing this in pencil so you should be able to erase those lines. Therefore, yours will look better than mine. The paint won't, won't cover my marker, but that's okay. This is just to teach you anyway. So after you erase both of these lines, we're going to work on the claws. We're going to do the easy claws first. In the picture, they didn't add any claws to this foot. It just looks like really weird. So it kind of looks like, like amputees. So we're not going to add full claws to those arms. We're just going to add like three small bumps. Okay. Just so it looks like there's something there. If not, it just looks like an amputee. Okay? So what I did on the top of these two right here, I just added three small bumps at the top of the branch. So it looks like it's hanging on with something. Because if not, it just looks weird. So I just added three small bumps on those two. You wouldn't see the rest of the claws because the, the rest of the claw would be hanging on the other side of the branch, right? So the reason we're only doing like a little bit of the claws on these two is because it's on the other side. It's wrapped around the other side of the branch and you wouldn't be able to see it from this angle. But at least I wanted to have something there. It just looks weird if you don't put anything. Okay. Now this next part can be a little confusing, but it isn't, it's easy enough. You can do it whatever way makes sense for you. So we're gonna go back to that first arm, okay? So just listen again, because if not, it does look confusing. We're going to go back to this first arm. See the one that we just made one line right here? It's, we have not connected it to the other arm yet. So don't do that yet, okay? So again, this first line, right above it, we're going to make four little curves, okay? So if you count, there's one, two, three, four. Kind of like C-shapes, okay? So you make four little curves, kind of like C-shapes. And they're going to go a little bit above the branch, and a little bit below the branch. Do you see how they're a little bit above and a little bit below? They need to be a little above and a little below the branch. And you're going to make 
four little curvy lines, one after another, not leaving too much space, just like that. Make sure you make four of them. Okay. So once you have these four little curves, we're going to connect them with little, little curves again. So it's hard to explain. You have to kind of see it. They only have, this is a three-toed sloth. So even though we have four lines, you're going to end up with three claws, okay? So again, you had, you had four lines, but when you connect the four of them together with little curves, see how I connected all of them? One, two, three little curves on the bottom, and one, two, three little curves on the top. Once you connect them, it looks like he has three claws, okay? Now you might have to go back and erase things if you need to, um, or what you can do is you can make the claws, if you're going to make the claws brown, nobody's going to see the pencil line, you know what I mean? But if you're going to make the claws white or a very light color, somehow you're going to have to erase the part of the branch that goes through the claws, but if you end up making the claws a darker color, it won't matter. So it all depends what color you choose. Now we're going to connect. Now that we have the claws in place, just put a little line from the bottom of the claw and connect it to this arm right here. So let me do that. Okay. You'll, you're all, all going to look a little different. It all depends how big you made things or how far away. So once you're done making the claws, just make a little line from here and connect it to the other arm. Your line might be shorter, your line might be longer. It all depends how far away you made everything and how big you made everything. Just make sure you're connecting the bottom here to this arm. Okay. I just want to erase a little something over here. Now we're going to do something similar, but for the back foot now, okay? So the pretty much the same thing we did for the claws over here, we're going to do it again right there. So we're going to kind of repeat that. Okay. So four curvy lines again, a little bit above and a little bit below the branch. Make sure you make four lines. Is that Chandra talking or Faith? Which one is it? I only see the adults' names, so I don't know who's talking to me sometimes. I know the sick of cooking part was Heather, though. <laughs> I can kind of figure it out by what you guys say sometimes. Oh, I just saw another post. Is that pronounced, is it Lakin? Is that how you pronounce your name, honey? L-A-K-I-N, Lakin? That's pretty. Hope I said it right. Yes, yeah, sloths are a lot of people's favorite animal, apparently. I literally just posted this yesterday. And I got, like, so many people that put interested in it. So that's pretty awesome. Um, Another person requested otters. <gasps> I love otters. I think they are absolutely adorable. Um, so I think it's like in the beginning of May, there's going to be an otter painting. So if you like animal themes, I'm doing an otter in a couple weeks. So cute. Love otters. All right. So again, remember how we connected the top and the bottom of the claws with just like three little curves? Do the same thing.
okay? So connect them all with little curvy lines. So now you should have three claws. Now this one doesn't have anything. The only thing this leg should have is your claws. We haven't drawn any lines for the rest of this leg yet. Just the claws. We're going to um, do that first. So again, remember what I was saying about this one? If you're going to make the claws a darker color, then you don't really have to worry too much about erasing the pencil that goes through from your branch. But if you're planning on making this a lighter color, it might not cover the pencil. So it's up to you. You might have to kind of fix that. I can't do anything because mine's in marker, so. Okay, so now we're just gonna add the rest of the leg. Now keep in mind, this is a back leg. So you're not gonna draw a full size leg like this one. This one's in the front, so that's why we can see the full leg. But this is a back leg, so it's only gonna look like half a leg because the other half is hiding behind this one, okay? So let me draw the lines for that. Okay. It would actually be bigger than this, but you can do that if you want. So something like that will work. But honestly, you know what? I think I wouldn't have made that line there, but you make it look however it looks good for you. I think it makes it look too skinny that way, but so at least make this one. I probably, if I did it again, I would not put this line here. I would kind of just... I don't know, do it differently. Or at least put the claws like closer. All right, so we've got a sloth. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add some branches and some leaves. Okay, you don't have to do this part, but it does look nicer because Honestly, um, there's really not much going on in our background. Um, I'm only going to paint the sloth and paint the branch and the leaves. If you guys want to go back after and paint the rest of the background, like blue or something for the sky or whatever color you choose, you can. I'm only going to paint the sloth and the branch and the leaves. That's it. And then I thought it would be kind of cool. I went on Pinterest, and if you do um, like sloth quotes, on Pinterest or even Google, but it, it worked out better on Pinterest. Um, you get a bunch of cute little pictures of sloths and they have like little sayings. So I like this one. It says, I'm not lazy, I'm energy efficient. So yeah, I like that one for me. So yeah, I thought it'd be really cute like after you're done to go on Pinterest and like just put in sloth quotes, cute sloth quotes and write something at the bottom if you had room. I like it. And then I want to see what you guys ended up writing. Okay, so now we're going to work on branches and leaves. So if you have a little bit of room above your branch, what we're going to do, and these branches should be a lot skinnier than the branch that the sloth is on. Okay, these need to be a lot thinner than the one that your sloth is hanging from. Okay, so I made one right about here, right above his head or in this area somewhere. See how it kind of looks like a Y shape? So make a skinny little branch that kind of looks like the letter Y right in this area if you have room. We'll worry about the leaves later. We're going to do all our branches first and we'll go back and add leaves. So just make a branch that kind of looks like the letter Y up here. Okay, and then we're going to do something similar, except it's backwards. You see how you can kind of see it. It's kind of the same shape, except it'll be kind of backwards. So let me trace that. Okay. So it looks similar, but they're going in the opposite direction, okay? So I'm making this one go this way, and then a line up like that, and then this one goes the opposite direction. So 
same basic shape, but they're just going in opposite directions. Now they ended up drawing the branches on the, um, on the bottom a little bit different than the ones on the top. So for the ones on the bottom, if you have some room, after his little bum bum here, if you got a little bit of room, this is what they did. So the shape kind of looks like that. So if you can make a shape that looks like that, that'll be great. So it's a little bit different than the top. And then another one with the same shapes that's coming out of this one. Okay. So again, it's like the same shape, but now this one's coming out of this one. They all kind of look like letter Y's, though. If you look at them, they're all kind of Y shaped. It's just a different way to do it, okay? And then if we go to the other side, if you have room, if you don't have room, you don't have to squeeze it in there. Um, this one's going to be very similar to what we just did. And I'll hold it up closer in a second. I'm also tracing this in marker upside down, so it's not going to be as neat as it should be, okay? So again, not as neat as it should be because I traced it upside down, but you get the point, right? So same kind of shape as this, but a lot neater. Do that here. It kind of comes out of the corner like that, Whatever you, wherever you have room to put it, okay? So that's what we're doing for branches. If you don't like these that they did on the bottom... You can make them look like this, too. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to start adding leaves. So again, the ones on the top are different than the bottom. The leaf shapes are the same shape, but they're put on the branches in a different way. So the ones on top attach the branches with a little line first. So you make, this is just for the top ones. So for the top ones, you make a little line like the stem. We make the stem first, like that, so a little line coming out of the branch, and then you make the leaf. Okay? So for these, you make the little stem, the little line coming out of the branch, and then you make a leaf shape, okay? And then you put a line through the middle, but make sure that line doesn't go all the way till the end. So when you put a line in the middle of any leaf, it never should go all the way to the end. That little line in the middle stops before it touches the edge, the tip, okay? So we make a little line for the stem, then we make the leaf shape, and then we go back and add a line in the middle, but it doesn't go all the way to the end. So if you have room here, make another one, make a line, the leaf, and then the line down the middle, okay? If you don't have room, don't squish things in. So I added another one right about here, but that's only because I had a little room. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to go to the other side. We're going to do the same exact thing, okay? So we're going to make a little line for the leaf where we want the leaf to go. I'm putting that one right here, okay? I'm going to make the leaf. So line, leaf, and then line in the middle. Just like that. If you have room, you got a little bit of room right here, I'm going to do that again. Line for the stem. The leaf. And then the line through the middle. Okay, so those are the leaves on the top. So that's what the top should look like. Now the leaves on the bottom, they're the same shape, but we're going to attach them 
to the branches differently than we attach them to these branches, okay? So for the bottom ones, what you're going to do, and I'll just make one and kind of explain it. So the branches on the bottom should already kind of be pointy and long, right? So you're going to use the tip of this branch. See how it's already kind of long like that and skinny at the end? So you're going to start your leaf like down here. So this part's already in the middle of your leaf, okay? So if you look at the one I didn't trace, the branch was already there, right? I didn't do anything. So you're just going to start your leaf down here and draw your leaf around the tip of your branch. Does that make sense? And if you want, you can go back and make this longer afterwards if you need to, okay? And I'm going to do that one more time for the other side because it's the same thing, okay? So you're just going to start drawing your branch down here, not branch, your leaf, I'm sorry. And start drawing your leaf down here because the tip of the branch is the part that goes down the middle of the leaf. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So if you didn't get that, it's okay, we're going to do it again. So look closely, that's without the leaf. You're starting the leaf like down here. Okay, you can kind of see where it is in pencil before I trace it. This upside down thing is getting a little easier, but it's still not perfect. Okay. So there you go, something like that. Kind of make that a little darker. Once we color things in, it'll look different too. Okay, beautiful. Just like that. So now we've got our branches, we've got our leaves. Um, now what we have to do is, remember I said you guys needed a permanent marker too, like I, like I did? Grab your marker and trace everything. Make sure if there's anything that needs to be erased, you erase everything that needs to be erased first. Take a good look at it. Make sure that you don't want to erase anything. Make it look exactly how you want it to look. And then grab your marker and trace everything, okay? So this is going to take maybe like five minutes the most, okay? So start tracing. While you guys are tracing, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that we're going to need again. If you need me to hold that picture back up, just comment below and I'll hold it back up while I'm talking, okay? So once again, the things that we're going to need, if you're using acrylic paint, oh my God, my hair looks terrible. Okay. <laughs> I want to tuck it in my headband a little bit so it's like not in my face. <laughs> looks horrible. Stay. What are you doing? Guys, I'm still on film, please. The dog's jumping on here. Okay, so you're going to need a paper plate if you're using paint. You need that. Paper towel or napkin to dry your brush. Can you, like, not make the dogs go crazy while I'm doing this, please? I'm standing still. All right, just go somewhere there, else then. Yeah. <sighs> Getting the dogs all riled up. Then we need a small brush. I like it too, but not like this. Like when it's, like, fixed and not all fuzzy and white roots. So, yeah, the water bin, and then let the colors are super easy. There's like hardly anything for colors. There's just white, brown, and then we're going to make tan. White and brown make tan. And then green for your leaves. So, like, there really isn't a lot of color to this. Then you could go back later on your own time, and you could add color to your background if you want to do your background, okay? But we're just going to paint the sloth, the branch, and the leaves today. And then you could also write a quote on the bottom if you have room, okay? And then you're going to send those to me so I can see what they look like. So um, once my painting is done, I'm going to let it dry. You want to let this dry for a good 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure it's completely dry, okay? So when you're done with these markers, you're going to take them and put your marker as far away as possible because what happens is people tend to try to... um like write on wet paint with marker and it doesn't work, you're gonna ruin your markers. And markers are not cheap sometimes. And not like we can just go to any store right now and buy markers. You have to order them online and that takes forever. So once you're done tracing everything, take your marker, give it to your adult or go put it far away, somewhere you cannot reach it, okay, until this painting is done and dry. Um, 
And then once we're done, like I said, let it dry for at least 20 to 30 minutes. And then you could go back and you could trace anything that needs to be traced that got covered with paint. Because we are going to cover things with paint. And the reason we're covering, uh, drawing them in marker first is that way we can still see some of our details after we paint over them. That way we know where they are to trace, okay? If we left it in pencil, um, it would work, but some of the details might get covered. So this way, they're there. You don't lose the details, okay? So I'm going to give you a couple more minutes to finish tracing. I'm going to put some colors in my plate. So again, we need some white. So if you're done, you can put the paint in your plate. Don't put a lot because, again, not like we can just go to Michael's and go buy more paint. So just put a little bit of each color, and if you run out, then you add a little bit more. Don't put a lot of paint, okay? So I just put some white in my plate. I'm going to put some brown in my plate. Just a little bit of each color. And I'm going to put some green. We are going to mix colors to make other colors. Right now I only have three colors, white, brown, and green. That's it right now. One more minute for tracing, okay? And don't start painting without me. We're going to do the painting part pretty much the same way that we did um, the drawing part, okay? And this is pretty, this one's pretty self-explanatory. So what that means is you could probably figure out how to paint this without me. But it's actually fun. We keep, keep each other company and talk to each other. Even though I can't hear your voice, if you say something to me, I can answer you or respond. And you guys can hear me. So it's still nice to do it together even if we're on different steps, right? So I'm just making sure that my brush is nice and clean. So let me explain a couple of things while you guys finish doing that. So the only time that it's okay to be a little rough with these small brushes is when they're in the water. So when they're in the water, the proper way to wash them is to press them down to the bottom and rub them back and forth. So you want to touch the bristles to the bottom and rub them back and forth. That's how you get the paint off. If you just move your bristles around on the top of the water and it's not rubbing on the bottom, it doesn't really take the paint off that great, okay? So you are allowed to do that with your brush, but only when it's in the water, okay? Once you take this brush out of the water, then you have to be gentle with it, okay? So you're going to take your brush once you get it out of the water, and every time you dry, we, I mean, uh, every time you rinse, we need to dry this before we put it in the paint. So now I'm going to be gentle with my brush. And I'm just going to press it down a couple times on each side. I'm like flipping it over. I am not doing this to dry. This is how you ruin your, your bristles. This is not how you dry. You can only do that when it's in the water to rinse, okay? And that's how you dry a brush without ruining it, okay? So, hopefully everyone's ready to go. So the first color that we're going to start with is plain old white. Not much to that, right? So we're going to take a teeny bit of white, not too much, okay? You can kind of see him. We're not going to paint exactly like the stuffed animal behind me, okay? But that just gives us an idea. So we're going to take him, and I'm going to hold him this way, okay? You can hold him however you want, but I'm just going to take my canvas now, and I'm going to hold it this way, okay? Bring this closer. With a little bit of white paint, I'm going to paint the inside of his face. And I know it's hard to see because it is white paint. So I'm going to paint around that mask area. So this little section right here, that's it. like right above the mask. You can kind of see where the wet paint is. Okay. So this little area above the mask right here underneath. Okay. Can you guys see where the wet paint is? You can kind of see it a little bit. So I just painted this white right there. Then I'm going to paint around his nose underneath the mask. So underneath that little mask. If I get some white paint on his nose, it won't matter because we can fix that, right? We can fix that later with markers. So I'm going to go between his eyes with that white. I'm going to go around his nose, and it does not matter if I get white on his nose. We're going to fix it later, so don't stress out, okay? A little bit more white, 
and I'm going to paint over his mouth. Oh my goodness. I'm going to take some white and we're going to paint over the mouth. So we want this to be a nice clean area right here. Again, I got some Molo. I got some on my nose too. Not a big deal. It's kind of it's a very small area, so it's kind of hard to get in there without doing that. But you don't want to paint over the whole thing on purpose, right? Okay. There we go. So that's where the you can kind of see where I put my white paint. So right in here over the mouth, around the nose, around the mask, and right above his head. Okay? I'm gonna eat, I need to erase this pencil over here. I didn't trace it the right way, so there's like pencil there. Okay. That's better. So that's um, where I'm putting the white. Now, before we move on, you have choices. Okay, I don't know. This guy's got kind of different color. So if you want, I looked at this different ways you can paint sloths, okay? So before we move on to the next color, decide what color you want his claws to be, okay? So I'm going to make his um, his body's going to be tan, like a, think of coffee milk. Not like brown, like dark coffee, but when you put milk in coffee, like coffee milk, that's the color I'm going to make his body, so tan, okay? And then I'm going to use brown for the um, the mask area, okay? So then you got to decide what color you want his claws to be. So his claws can be white, they can be like a dark brown, or they can be black, okay? So decide what you want his claws to be. Um, if you want his claws to be white, then now is the time to do that, okay? If you do not want his claws to be white, then you're all done using white paint and you're just gonna rinse and dry like I am, okay? So I'm gonna make his claws a different color. So I'm gonna rinse and dry because I'm done with the white, so I only used it on the part of the face that I needed to. So I'm rinsing, rinse like I showed you, press it down a little bit, move it around, and then dry it on that paper towel. Look at your brush, make sure there isn't like a make sure there isn't like a drip of water coming down your handle because that does happen sometimes. Okay? So now that the face is done, I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. Okay? We're going to leave the face alone, we'll get back to it. And we're going to work on the branch, okay? Or branches. So let's work on let me move my plate so it's in a better spot. I'm just going to move my paint plate to my right side since I'm right-handed. There we go. I'm going to grab some brown paint and we're going to start by painting our big branch, okay? So start by painting your big branch. Go around your claws. Don't paint your claws. So I'm painting my big branch. And again, I am going to move rather quickly. If you can't keep up, I apologize. I just don't want these videos to be too long. But I think you guys can figure out, at, you know, where these colors go. And you can kind of do it how you want, too. You don't have to even use the same colors. So I'm going to make sure that I'm painting around the arms. So even though I have this line here, I'm not painting this because um, this is not part of the branch anymore. Remember, I couldn't erase that. You guys should have erased this and this. I can't, but I know better not to paint through it. I just got brown on my wrist. Ew. That's the one good thing about acrylic paint. It does wash off your skin. Not so much off your clothes, so try not to get this paint on your clothes. But it does wash off your skin, because if not, I'd be covered in it all the time. So I'm painting the branch. I'm painting around his claws. Okay. I'm going to continue to paint that long branch. Okay, and then you should have a little section in between here. It's this little section that's in between the feet right there. So double check. Make sure you didn't forget to paint any part of the branch. 
Okay. So let me back up so you can see. So I, in, I painted the entire main branch. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to start painting the little branches. Okay. So I'm going to paint the small branches now. Painting my small branches. Okay. I'm painting the small ones. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, and then I'm going to do the ones on the bottom. All right, so I painted all of my branches. Now, if you're going to do the mask brown like I am, I'm going to do his mask. See, like if you look at the guy in back of me, let me get him. I don't want to get paint on him, but. See how he's got a brown mask around his eyes? We're not going to do the gray around his mouth. You can if you want, but I'm not going to make it look like this. But you see how that brown part is around his eyes? I'm going to do that part though, okay? So when I'm done with my branches, while I still have brown, I'm going to get a little bit more. And you're going to paint around the little black dots. You're going to paint over them, okay? So I'm going to start painting. Let me hold this a little bit higher. I'm going to paint that little mask area, okay? Paint over the black dot. Your, your white should be kind of dry. That's why, that's why we went and we did the branches while we were letting the white dry. Okay, so we painted a little brown mask on him just like that, okay? So with the brown, we painted... The long, big branch, the little branches, and if you wanted to make the um, the mask part in his face brown, do that now as well. Look <laughs> at the filter. Look at my lip. Ooh. <sighs> this is great because I don't feel like putting makeup on. Not that it's a lot. Look, I don't know if you guys see this, but when I look at it, it looks like I have freckles, and it just makes my skin look so nice. I love it. Not that it's that bad, but. I know you guys don't care if I have makeup on or not. You love me anyway, right? With or without. Okay, so. Hopefully that was enough time to do the brown. So don't do this next part until you're done with everything that needs to be brown. You have to do everything that needs to be brown first before you do this next part, okay? So if you look at his body... That's kind of like a tan color, okay? We're going to kind of go something similar to that, okay? Remember what I said before, coffee milk? I don't know if you... Okay, we're from New England. So I'm assuming most of us had had coffee milk. Or you know what coffee from Dunkin' Donuts looks like with milk in it? You know that color, that tannish? That's what we're going for, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to mix brown and white together until we get a shade of tan that we want our sloth to be. Yours can be darker than mine, lighter than mine. It does not matter. As long as it's some shade of tan or light brown, okay? So take your brown, take your white, mix them together however you want until you get a tan that you like. If you add too much brown, you can go back and add more white. Vice versa, it works both ways. If you made it too light, go back and add more brown. So it all depends what shade you're looking for. Okay. So this is the kind of this is the color that I came up with. Okay, so I mix brown and white together, and this is the color that I'm gonna use. Something like this. Okay, you can make it a little bit. Um, a little bit lighter. 
I wouldn't make it too much darker. You want there to be contrast. Um, you don't want it to look too close to the brown that you already have, okay? You want there to, to be different. One's going to be a lot lighter than the other, okay? So you don't want it to be too dark. So if it's too dark, add more white. It needs to be contrast. So we're going to start painting. Again, we're going to leave the face alone. Give the face a chance to dry. Let's start painting on the opposite side of the body, okay? So I think what I'm going to do so I don't smudge things is I'm going to take the painting. <laughs> that looks funny, like that. So, so I don't smudge my branch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my painting over so the branch is on the bottom. That way I don't smudge it with my arm while I'm painting my sloth, okay? So flip it over, make sure the branch is on the bottom so you don't smudge it. And I'm going to start painting from the back of his body to his head. So I'm starting on his back leg. So once you have, you can kind of see the color that I have right here. Okay, that's some something like that. That's what you're looking for, okay? So I'm going to paint his back leg. And you're painting over the marker. Remember, you're painting over the marker. You're going to fix this later, okay? I'm going to start painting his back and his belly. This part's really easy. This part should be nice and quick because there's like nothing in the way. It's a nice big surface. So you can go really quick when you paint the body. Make sure you spread out your paint. You don't want any big globs. Making sure I go back and I spread out all my paint before I add more to my brush. So I painted a lot so far. He looks weird in this position. I'm going to start painting his front legs. Unfortunately, you could still see the marker going through his arm, but that's okay. Again, this is just to teach you guys how to do it. Mine's not going to get hung up anywhere for anybody to see. Mine, mine is the teaching one. It's to make yours look good. That's all that matters. Okay, so I'm painting his front arms now. So you want to paint his entire body. I'm not painting the claws. So don't do the claws. Just the body. Okay. Once you're done with the body, that should have given the face enough time to dry. By the time you get to the face, it should be dry or almost dry, okay? So I'm going to flip it this way now. Once I'm done with the body, I'm going to flip it so the head is on top, okay? And I'm going to start painting the outside of his head. Very important, you don't paint the middle. The middle has to stay white. So the middle is white and then the brown mask and then around that is going to be tan, okay? So very important that you don't paint the middle of his face tan. Leave the middle of his face white. Okay, so I'm painting his face, just the outside though, okay? And you know what the good thing about this is you can go out of the lines because he's furry, right? So you can purposely paint outside the lines and kind of make him look a little fuzzy if you wanted to. So I'm kind of purposely going to go outside the lines so he looks a little fuzzy. because He's got fur, right? There we go. So his head's all painted now, starting to look a little bit more like a sloth now. Okay. So once you're done painting his head and all of his body, we're going to flip it 
back the original way, the way it's supposed to be. So flip him back when you're done, just like that, okay? And we're going to work on some leaves. So rinse and dry. And we all know what color leaves are, right? Well, except for the fall when they change color, but normally they're green. So green paint and just paint all your leaves. Paint right over that black line in the middle. You can even trace your little stem if you want to. Okay. You can trace the stem or you could leave it black. That's the choice. That's up to you. So I'm just painting all of my leaves. Okay, look how pretty. That green just makes this whole thing pop. I love the green, so cute. Now we're gonna do the leaves on the other side, same thing. Well, this painting needed a little color, huh? Too much brown and tan, not a lot of neutrals. It needed a little bit of color. That green really makes it pop. Okay, almost done with the leaves. One more. Perfect. Okay, so I'm done painting all the leaves. Now the only thing I have to decide now is what color I'm going to do the claws. So again, you could do white, you could do brown, but I don't want to do like brown though because like the branch is brown and that's not enough contrast. I don't think it'll look good if I do his claws the same color as the branch, right? Um, and then if I do them black, you won't be able to see the individual either. So you know what I think? I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put white paint over them, even though you can see my branch going through. I think I'm gonna go back and I think I'm just gonna leave my claws white. But you can do whatever you want. Now I just need more white paint. You see, that's why I told you guys to do it before. But I, I quite wasn't sure what I wanted to do either. So I'm just gonna put like a little dot of white because I used all my white to make tan. Yeah, so I think I'm going to leave my claws white, but you can make them another color. Just don't make them the same exact color as your branch because it doesn't make sense, right? Make them lighter or darker than your branch. You could make them black, like I said. I just don't, I don't want to make them black because then you won't be able to see the individual claws. So I'm just going to go back now and I'm just going to put white paint. And again, I'm going over the marker. We can trace that later. I'm just putting white paint over my claws and then I'll trace it when it's done. But yeah, you can do black. Like I said, you could do black if you want. Originally, that's what I was going to do. But then I can't bring back the details of the three individual ones. If they're in black, it's harder to see. I mean, I could do it, but then for you guys, it's up to you. But a lot of pictures, they do have white or light colored claws. So then I'm just going to, don't forget... You don't forget the claws, like, or the partial claws on these back legs. So I'm just adding some white, like, right where those claws are. Can you see how I did that? Right there. Or whatever color you decide. Just, again, just don't make them the same color as your branch. They just need to be a different color, okay? So, that's it. This was a pretty easy one. We did this in about an hour. Not bad at all. We beat the one hour and 15. That usually never happens. So let's just go over quickly what we did. So first we drew a branch, then we drew our sloth, and then we painted the middle of the face white, okay? And then we painted our branch, 
um, in our little branches, we painted them brown. We painted the mask on his face brown. Then we mixed a little bit of white and brown together to make tan. We painted his entire body tan, the outside of his face tan, okay? And then you can decide on whatever color you want for the claws. I ended up just painting mine white, but you can make them like a darker brown than the branch or black. That works too, okay? That's just a preference because different sloths have different color claws. So it, there is no right or wrong for the claws, okay? Then what I thought would be a really cute idea is um, you can either paint the background like a solid color if you want, or you can go on Pinterest and find a cute saying that goes with a sloth. And um, I, again, mine says, I'm not lazy, I'm energy efficient. If you don't know what that means, your adult will explain it to you. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. So when you're done, we're going to let this dry for 20 to 30 minutes. Have your parent set a timer if you're not sure how to tell time yet. They will tell you when 30 minutes is over. Then you can go back, grab your marker, and trace over everything that got covered up. Okay, even the leaves. You need to trace the leaves, the branches, everything. Pretend you're drawing it all over again, okay? But it has to be dry. So we're going to wait. I'm going to do the same thing. Once mine is dry, I'm going to take a picture, okay? So again, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy this day. And i got to figure out what we're going to make for dinner. Got four, four teenagers and a husband to feed. <laughs> thank you guys again. Mwah. Have a great day.